Hey everyone, Coach Sam and Alex here with Top Tennis Training and today we're going to teach you how to hit the perfect drop shot. We've all seen Alcaraz do it out there and now it's time for us to teach you how to do it yourself. Step number one is choosing the right ball to do your drop shot on. So you don't want to be hitting a drop shot when your opponent is attacking you, when you're in defense, that's more of a neutralizing slice. A drop shot, a good quality drop shot, is when you're in attack, you're setting up for the ball, your opponent is going back because they're trying to buy themselves space, expecting for you to hit a big forehand or a big backhand, and instead of doing that, you're then playing a drop shot, making it very difficult for them to get to. Whoa, 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 stop there. Subscribe right now before we go any further. You want your opponent to be on their heels, so they're gonna be uh, split stepping back, therefore makes it more difficult for them to sprint forward. They're not gonna be like this on the toes because you're lining up uh, to hit that, uh, that big shot first. And that's where it's important to disguise that part uh, of the shot, which we're gonna cover later on in the lesson. So usually that type of shot arrives after you've hit a big serve. So a serve and a next shot, because the player's naturally just defended that first serve, they're naturally on the back heels, you're able to drop shot or after you've just hit a big shot uh, either side and they're on the run and they've dropped the ball a little bit shorter for you, that's the perfect time to pull the trigger with that drop shot. Best drop shots are hit from inside the baseline. With a shorter distance for the ball to travel, it gives no time for your opponent. Plus, a closer target also makes your execution a lot easier. So now that you know when to hit the drop shot, it's all about the execution. Now the first thing you have to have is the continental grip. This is the same grip that we serve with, the same grip that we volley with, and the same grip that we slice with. Now this will allow you to have that underspin on that ball, which will then give you the control over that drop shot. So here is a continental grip. We want the base of the index knuckle and the heel pad on both bevel number two. Let's look at the basics of the drop shot technique. Look at the forehand first. Obviously, you've got your continental grip, your chopper grip. What you don't want to do is very similar to a forehand slice, but what you don't want to do is hit through the ball as much. You're trying to catch the ball, the bottom side of the ball. You're trying to uh, hit the ball a little bit slower. So you're slowing down the ball through the rotation of the ball. A little bit more gentle with your hands and you're catching that bottom side of the ball. So you're doing that, where you're hitching, hitting underneath of the ball and the bottom side of your racket is going through contact here rather than maybe with a slice where you show a lot more string to the ball. And the same thing happens on the backhand. Here, exactly the same as a normal backhand slice, but instead of going through quite as much, you're being a little bit more gentle with your contact. You don't start the hit too early. You don't start this very fast. You come up to it quite gently. You want to be quite close to the ball, and then you're going through contact. So you're never gonna have that shot as a really powerful shot. It's a touch shot. You're looking for finesse here, rather than brute power. You're looking for that ball to drop short in the court with that backspin, not to carry the ball for the opponent to be able to reach it. So there you could see my normal slice. I'm taking the racket back. I'm extending through contact. It's a long move. I'm trying to hit through the shot. I'm trying to add rotation as well as power to carry that ball low and through the court. technique changes slightly. I'm not carrying through as far. I'm going down, then forward, then even a little bit up. So it's almost like the letter J where I go down, through, and slightly up. So I'm catching underneath of the ball. I'm still accelerating through it, but I'm not giving pace to the ball. I'm accelerating through it to add rotation. The bounce is a little bit higher. The clearance over the net is higher, but what I'm hoping for is for the ball not to bounce forward into my opponent, causing a lot of difficulty because they're gonna to have to reach there and the ball is not reaching them because it has that ultimate backspin that I've just put on it. Now, one of the best ways to improve your drop shot is to make sure that you have soft hands. You don't wanna be rigid. You don't wanna be holding the racket too tight. Make sure the wrist is relaxed. Make sure the fingers are relaxed and this will allow you to have that relaxation and that looseness around the point of contact. It's crucial that we have the side of the strings we're hitting the ball with opening up towards the sky. Imagine I'm gonna catch the ball on my strings. That kind of feel is what we're looking for when we hit the drop shot. 
So here I'm going to demonstrate the normal forehand slice. The preparation will be the exact same on that drop shot, but you'll see the difference being that this swing is more linear. I'm hitting through that ball, and then with the drop shot, I'm catching the ball on my strings. So I'm going towards my target with the rack ahead. Now, the drop shot. Same preparation, catching the ball on the string. Now the height of the drop shot, if you're going for a drop shot with more backspin, you can aim higher. Now the peak of the actual ball flight should be on your side of the court. It shouldn't be on their side because then it gives them too much time to actually chase that ball down and catch it. Now here is the difference between the slice and the drop shot. Slice. Drop. One more. Now, once you have the basics down off the drop shot, it's all about the disguise. 50% of hitting a successful drop shot is making the opponent not know that it's coming. And it's all about disguising it. So almost imagine you're hitting your normal backhand or your normal forehand. And at the very last second, you change into the continental grip and hit that drop shot. We see this often with Alcaraz on the backhand side. He's in that power position. And at the last second, he takes the top hand off and then he catches the ball on the strings to hit that drop shot. So now let's look at the disguise. I'm gonna try and hit like a proper backhand. In fact, I'll even hit one backhand and then a disguise one, just for you to be able to see the difference. and you're looking for the ball to bounce at least twice in the box before it leaves the box. So if it's bouncing twice, it means your opponent has to go forward and it has to get that ball before it reaches the service line. It makes it more difficult. Obviously in that case, it bounced many times. If you can get it to stay in the box, that's the ultimate drop shot. Now the luxury we have with the two hand is, for most of us, we already use that continental on the bottom hand. So it's very easy for me to get into that power position and just take the top hand off, release that top hand, and then have that perfect grip to hit that drop shot. So it's gonna look like this when I'm looking for that disguise. So drive. Once again, if I disguise that drop shot to the very last second, it doesn't have to be perfect because my opponent is anticipating a powerful backhand and suddenly they have to run forward. Now on the forehand, the grip change is absolutely vital. I use the semi-western grip on my forehand, so for me... It's quite a, f a big change to uh, a chopper grip. 90 degree rotation almost. It happens behind me, so you don't want to do it too early. If I do this, the opponent knows that the drop shot is coming. So I get it here, then I change, then I go forward. You don't have enough time to put your left hand on there and do any manipulation of the grip. Usually the left hand is what changes your grip on, the, on your forehand. This time, in terms of drop shot, you want to be doing everything here. So it happens with the fingers here. The fingers roll the racket from this position on the forehand into this position for the drop shot. Now Alcaraz has a clever solution that makes it easier. He's in semi-western for the forehand. Instead of going all the way to continental grip, he only twists by one bevel, so it's closer to eastern grip when he hits it. You can see him lift his thumb off, and it's only a subtle shift of hand, and he's still able to execute without having to twist his wrist too much. Now, if you have an eastern grip or semi-western grip, you can go this way, so I rotate clockwise. Whereas when you have a, 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 west, or a heavy semi-western grip, or a real western grip, like an extreme western grip, it's almost easier to go the other way. So you're already close to that chopper grip, so you go the other way, so anti-clockwise. So you can rotate it both ways, depending on the grip that you use on your forehand. So for me, I use the eastern forehand grip. So for me, I'm in that position here, my power position, and at the last second, I change into that continental grip. Come on. There we go. Okay. 
Now, if I'm using a Western forehand grip, I can be in that same position, but instead of changing the grip this way, I'm going the other direction, and it's going to look like this. It's actually a very easy grip change if you have that Western grip. You're very close to that Continental already. So Western forehand grip, Continental grip. So a big part of hitting that drop shot the right way is all about your swing and when you do that disguise. So if you have an abbreviated swing, you can actually use that left hand in order to change the grip because your actual swing is very close to where your left hand was. So from here, a normal forehand would be here and then maybe a change would be a drop shot. Now, if you go the other way, when you have a slightly bigger swing, if your racket is all the way here on those easy balls, because don't forget, you are gonna be hitting it on that easy ball when the opponent is being pushed back. From here, it's very difficult for me to put the, the hand there to change. And if you're doing it too early, if you do it from here and you're waiting and running up to the ball like this, the opponent is gonna feel that something's off. They're gonna know that you're going for that drop shot and they're more likely to anticipate it. Now, ideally, you're going to be making contact around chest or shoulder height on that drop shot. If I'm trying to hit a drop shot from here, the ball has to firstly lift up, giving the opponent more time, and it makes it much harder for me to actually execute a good drop shot. If I'm catching it around chest or shoulder height, I don't need to give the ball so much lift giving the opponent much less time. Now, an important thing to know is when you are hitting your drop shot, make sure you go to the ball. Don't wait for that ball to come because A, you're giving your opponent a lot of time to recover, get back into their position, but also by standing and not going to the ball, this makes that execution very difficult. So when the ball is in front of me, I try and get there so I'm close to it and then I can extend through it. So the closer I am to the ball, the easier it is for me to feel that ball. You don't want to be reaching for that ball out there because you, it's more likely that you're gonna miss it. It's very difficult to control the ball out too far in front. So there you have it, how to hit the perfect drop shot in tennis. We hope you've enjoyed this lesson and learned something new. If you did enjoy the lesson, make sure that you leave a comment under the video. Let us know what you enjoyed the most, what you struggle with on your drop shot and anything you struggle with in your game. Apart from that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, press that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future lessons from us. See you soon.